Uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, this is a <clears throat> uh, attempt at uh, overdubbing some of the slideshows that you have online. And we're going to start with, uh, of course, the Chapter 16 outline. Uh, chapter 16 is Lymphatic System and Immunity. So here we go. Hang in there. Uh, this is new to me. It's new to you. We're going to figure this out together. So we're talking about the body defenses against infection. Uh, the thing is about infection is that uh, anything that your body considers to be a foreign object will be attacked by some level of the immune system. Uh, and so the, the trick is how does your body figure out what is not you and what is you? You don't want to attack you. Of course, that's the basis for uh, a lot of... Uh, autoimmune diseases and there are lots and lots of those uh, around lots of examples of those but your body at, a, at an innate level at the beginning level has to figure out what you are versus what is foreign to you and so what's foreign to you is called a pathogen a pathogen is a disease causing agent as you see there on the screen right so this includes of course the obvious bacteria viruses hmm Yes, this COVID-19 uh, virus is considered a pathogen. Uh, then there are other organisms like protozoa, spores, of multicellular organisms like fungi, uh, other, other organisms. Even, even uh, oddly shaped proteins can be uh, sensed as an immune foreign agent against your body. That's considered a pathogen. Uh, the thing is about a pathogen is it says if, if it's unchecked, it causes infection. Your body reacts to that uh, foreign body, that foreign invader. And there's really two big ways in which your body responds, right? It responds to, uh, as is known as innate defenses, or these are called non-specific defenses. Non-specific means that it doesn't matter what it is, your body reacts to it. It doesn't care what it is. It's not even in the business of figuring out what the foreign invader is. It simply protects against all these different kinds of pathogens. It recognizes the pathogen and says, that is a foreign object. I am going to react against it. There are other kinds of, uh, the, the secondary kind of immunity uh, is known as the adaptive defense. And that's immunity as you uh, come to define it in most situations. You think of immunity as immunity to a specific foreign pathogen, a specific target. Um, so, for example, this COVID-19 uh, infection that's going around, you, of course, think of your immune system as reacting to that specific thing. But that specific thing is called a novel coronavirus novel coronavirus means novel means simply that no one on the planet has ever seen this virus no immune system has ever seen this virus and so you are uh, what we refer to as naive to this pathogen we have a primary immune response so we're going to have an innate defense against it but it's not enough our adaptive immunity takes several weeks to show up and so that's the problem with a novel infection, is that our immune systems don't know how to react, and it takes several weeks for it to react. Uh, and if you survive that several weeks, then you have long-lasting immunity, which is wonderful as long as you make it to that level. But let's talk more about that, that, that process. All right, so here is a, a chart. This chart uh, reveals uh, the kind of innate or what's known as non-specific defenses that your body puts up against a foreign invader, a pathogen. Uh, so, of course, there's species resistance. Species resistance means that you are susceptible to, to certain diseases that, say, your dog or your cat or a bat or a snake is not uh, 
privy to. They don't get those infections. They may carry those viruses or they may carry those bacteria. And so that's what they're referred to as carriers of a disease, but they do not respond to it. They do, it is not a foreign pathogen to them. And they do not react to it in the same way that your body would react to that foreign invader. Um, uh, the classic barriers are the mechanical barriers. Mechanical barriers, skin. Skin's your first and foremost uh, barrier against the outside world, right? Mucous membranes prevent the entrance of infectious agents. Fluids wash away micro microorganisms before they can firmly attach to tissue. That's what, uh, gotta say it this way, uh, that's what snot is for. When you breathe in something that you don't want, when you breathe in COVID-19, wherever it may be, and it gets stuck to a mucous membrane inside your nose, your ciliated uh, columnar epithelium work to take that mucus and push it out of your body. They either push it out of your nose, so you blow your nose into Kleenex, or you uh, uh, swallow it and it goes down your esophagus into your stomach. And we'll talk about that in a future lecture. Uh, inflammation. Inflammation is enzymes of various body fluids that kill pathogens. They're not specific to those pathogens. Pathogens. They kill anything, anything they consider to be a foreign invader. pH extremes, especially in, in your in, uh, stomach. Your stomach is at a pH of about 2. There's a significant amount of hydrochloric acid in your stomach. High salt concentration. Of course, that's harmful to foreign invaders, the pathogens. That's a good way to kill them. If you're gonna, ha if you're gonna uh, uh, create a lot of phlegm, a lot of mucus in your nasal passages, in your throat, you're gonna swallow that. That's going to become phlegm. You're gonna swallow it. It's gonna go into your stomach, pH of two, hydrochloric acid. You're gonna destroy that sucker as fast as possible, which is a great thing. That's good. Uh, if some of those foreign pathogens get into your bloodstream, your body will respond in a nondescript, nonspecific manner by producing these things called interferons. That word, I-N-T-E-R-F-E-R-O-N-S, interferons. Interferons induce production of other proteins that block the production of viruses, stimulate phagocytosis, enhance the activity of cells, such that they resist infection and the growth of tumors or uh, further infection. Uh, there are other proteins called defensins, which is a, uh, a term that kind of makes sense, right? You're defending your body, right? So we call these proteins defensins. Uh, they damage bacterial cell walls and cell membranes. Uh, collectins bind to micro, right, microbes, complement, stimulates inflammation, attracts phagocytes, and enhances phagocytosis. We'll talk about complement a little bit more uh, as we go along. There's chemical barriers, distinct type of lymphocytes that secrete perforins. Perforins are also molecules, they're enzymes that open up the virus infected cells and cancer cells and actually destroy those cells. So if you have COVID-19 in you or any other virus, I don't care what the virus is, if you have that virus and uh, it infects certain cells, those cells are marked for doom. Your body will look at those cells and mark them as, I need to kill this cell. That cell must go. And it does this by uh, uh, secreting these, these uh, uh, proteins called perforins that lice that virus infected infected cell, right? It looks at that cell, it says, this is an infected cell, get rid of it. Your immune system says, goodbye cell, see you later, don't need you. My favorite cell in the whole body is called a natural killer cell. And then the, um, the natural killer cell, I mean, they should have made a movie about this one. The natural killer cell is a, a tissue response to injury that prevents, uh, to prevent the spread of infectious agents to nearby tissues. We're going to talk about natural killer cells a little bit more. Phagocytosis, there are, there are three kinds of cells that can phagocytize. That means 
those cells can eat or destroy other uh, harmful agents, other pathogens. Those three types of cells are called neutrophils, monocytes, and macrophages. Those three types of cells have the ability to phagocytize other invading foreign cells. Uh, and then fever. Your own body creates a fever for you. You might not consider that a great thing for you, but a fever elevates your own uh, body temperature. The homeostatic set point of your body temperature is elevated. It turns out that your immune system uh, is actually uh, stimulated by an increase in the homeostatic set point of body temperature. We have a name for that. That's called a fever. When you have a fever, your immune system is more reactive and the proteins are more abundant during a fever than at any other time, which is, which is normal, right? That, that seems like, I mean, if you think about it, that makes sense. At a normal body temperature, your immune system is uh, offline or barely online, maybe. Um, it doesn't really pay much attention. When the fever gets elevated, your immune system says, I'm ready to go. Let's kick into action. Uh, so innate defenses, these are the indiscriminate body reactions that your immune system will have to any foreign invader. So the first thing is species resistance. Species means that, uh, uh, so for example, I know you've heard this over and over and over again, but the COVID-19 virus uh, came from bats or snakes or we don't really know the whole history of that. We'll figure that out as time goes on. But those animals did not react to this virus as a foreign invader. However, once we get it, we have, uh, we have a certain immune response to that foreign invader. Uh, so those other species are resistant to that disease. It doesn't affect them. Certain species do not have the appropriate temperature or chemical environment or particular pathogen to survive and proliferate. So those organisms, organisms are considered carriers of that disease, whereas uh, we, uh, my dog is now next to me. <laughs> hey, puppy. Uh, we do not have, we do not react uh, to those particular foreign invaders. However, if they are, if those foreign invaders are carriers, what we what we refer to as carriers, if they're carriers, then we, once we get those pathogens, we react to those as pathogens, as foreign invaders, and then we mount a response against that. 